It is such an emotionally charged issue in the African American community that Chris Rock even spent the last two years making a documentary about it, and I'm talking about the term good hair. Please welcome sisters Sierra and Tatiana, and Tara and her mother Sharon. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay, so I'm going to start with you, Sierra. How do you um, describe your hair? My hair, it's a little wavy, but then again, it can be nappy. But you can still get a comb through it when I don't have a perm. Okay. And it's kind of damaged. Okay, so it, when you describe your hair as opposed to your sister's hair, do you think that you have bad hair? Compared to hers, yes. Compared like, to your sister, hers you, you, you call gorgeous. it bad hair. Okay, and why? Because it's like you could do anything with it as long, as pretty as the right color. Mine, it was before this, it was three different shades of brown. And it's just hard to, like, do anything mm -hmm. with it when it's not one complete shade. And she could wear it straight, curly, whatever she wants. And you have issues with your sister because of her hair? Yes. Like jealousy? A little, yes. Yeah. Did you, do you know that, um, Tatiana, that your sister um, is so jealous? I didn't find out about the jealousy necessarily until recently. Mm -hmm. um, I do tease her a lot about her hair because I feel like... Um, she needs weave in it to, for it to be long like mine. Mm -hmm. But growing up, um, I was always teased about being the only one with the good hair out of the family. So I, I just, I guess I rebelled and mm -hmm. <laughs> do it to her. Do you think that, that your hair is, is good? I do her. think that my hair is good. I don't need a relaxer or chemicals or anything in it. Um, I can straighten it. I can put some water in it and just go and it'll be curly mm -hmm. um, on its own naturally without chemicals. So I do it. Okay. And then um, we also have Sharon and Tara. Um, Tara, uh, why do you think your hair is uh, good hair? Well, I don't necessarily think, oh, I have good hair. I just think all hair is good hair. Mm -hmm. And I hate that there's so much self-hate within our community that, oh, I can't, you don't have the right kind of hair to go natural, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. OK, I know that you said that your hair has controlled your life. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, well, I've always had a relaxer since I was 10. My hair was always long. And there were times when, like, I would need to work out and I would get a relaxer. I'm like, man, I'm not messing up this relaxer, <laughs> going to work out and sweating in it, that kind of thing. So, and I didn't, you know, whenever I would get new growth, which is when your natural hair starts to grow out and your relaxer meets. So I didn't like when I would need to get a relax. I mm -hmm. wouldn't, you know, want anybody to see me. I'd but be like, oh, I need to go to the beautician. But your hair is all natural now. I think oh, it's yeah. beautiful. It's all natural. So your so. natural hair is causing a rift with your <laughs> mother. Yes. She, whenever I cut my hair, because she likes my hair long and relaxed, and whenever I cut it, she did not like it. Like, one time I cut it, and she was like, get out, because mm -hmm. she hated it. Get out? Yeah. That's serious. Her. So there's a strain on your relationship because of how she's wearing her hair now. Uh, yes, and it's been a very recent thing that she's decided to go completely natural. And I think it's just, it's an adjustment. It, it doesn't, um, she doesn't appear like my daughter. Uh, it's, what does it's that mean? Change. What does that mean she doesn't appear like your daughter? It, it, it has changed her appearance in terms of overall how she looks. I always thought her hair was beautiful. I think long hair is nice. And I think there are people that wear their hair short that it's fine. But I've always been accustomed to her hair being longer. Mm -hmm. You avoid um, introducing her to people. Because uh, of her hair now? Recently, yes, because of the transition. It's been a, it's a, ch it's a change in her appearance. And and so a, you avoid introducing her to people? I feel, Mom, that you are trying to make it all sound nice. But well, it's not by nice. You saying I don't think that it's you necessarily were, uh, nice, but I do a avoid the introductions. And I think that's because I'm adjusting to her. Adjusting or shamed? Because uh, there's a big difference. I think adjusting is, whoo, baby, I'm still not used to this hair <laughs> on you. Let me take a look at it. I might not love it, but... Here's my daughter. Yeah. Her name is Tara. Yeah. That's adjusting. Right. Ashamed is I'm not going to introduce you. I can think you, can I mean, you admit that there is some shame? Well, or I think some that I'm not, I'm not going out of my way to make an introduction. Oh. Um, and because you feel people are going to think what when they look at her? I, don't, I think people will have no problems with her. I think she's a very beautiful, uh, it's her mother. It's an adjustment for me. So it's your problem. Correct. Yes. What do you guys have to say about this? Because they're talking <laughs> oh. like this and like this and like this and like this. And oh, and I just, it's an adjustment. And I just, you know, I don't go out of my way to introduce people to her. And I just, 
We, yes, I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Definitely, this issue is generational. You have a lot of older women and men, especially men, who cry when their daughters cut off their hair. I have my, in my own personal experience, my grandmother, you know, was like, we worked so hard so that we didn't have to look like that. Why would you do that to yourself? And they have to have that kind of, our, the, the younger generation has to teach the older generation, you have been brainwashed essentially to think that this is the only way that you have to look. Because really, a lot of, for a lot of older generation, the hair thing, it wasn't just beauty. It was, you're not going to get a job. You're not going to walk in this room. You're not going to be able to find a, a mate if your hair isn't straight and conforming to mainstream society. So for a lot of them, it's an almost fear thing when they see their children going natural. So it's the job of the younger generation to educate. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. About hair, race, everything. Change. We'll be right back. Recently, a campaign was launched called My Black is Beautiful. It's featured in Essence magazine, and it celebrates African-American hair and the effort to get black women to start talking about how beautiful they are. Now, there were over 1,100 women that entered the search, and there were four winners, and two of them are here. We've got Kimberly and Yolanda. So did you guys have bad hair, good hair issues growing up as kids? Well, growing up, my mother never encouraged the term good hair. Mm -hmm. So I just... Um, I just appreciated that because it just allowed me to just accept my own hair. Mm -hmm. It was definitely thick and time consuming, so that's more, more so what I heard as far as growing up. Never encouraged good hair and bad hair mm -hmm. topics in my household. So. Good. And Kimberly, what about you? I had a lot of hair issues growing up because my hair is so big. You know, I was teased so much. I mean, people call me Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, <laughs> Shaggy Dog, Wet Mop. I've heard everything. So it was, it was just really hard, you know, because my hair was always so big and I always yeah. wanted it tamed. And I begged my mom for a perm. And, and it, was, it was a really like bad a straight experience. straight perm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah straight so perm. So tell me why it was important for you guys to be a part of this Black is, My Black is Beautiful campaign with Essence. Wow. The My Black is Beautiful <laughs> campaign is an awesome campaign you know that just celebrates black beauty mm -hmm. and every type of black beauty that there is and right. you know we were chosen from the Pantene search which was a part of the My Black is Beautiful campaign mm -hmm. and it just you know kind of shouts to everybody saying you know my black is beautiful your black is beautiful right. her black is beautiful there's not one separate type of hair you know that's supposed to represent the black community but right. it's all beautiful. I agree. <laughs> Black and, and also, definitely, um, along with the My Black is Beautiful, just taking that inner beauty, that inner strength, and letting it translate to your outer, mm -hmm. and just letting, you know, what you already have on the inside, that self-confidence about who you are, and just taking ownership of your, your own personality and letting that just... And originality. You know, exactly. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. It's about choices. Okay, so let's remind ourselves of Tahita. Remember her? Um, after much debate, I mean, she was at the top of the show with all the drama and the ladies debating on whether she should be natural or not. Tahita decided that she was ready to go natural. She wanted to give it a try. So uh, let's see what she looks like now. Come on out, Tahita. <laughs> So pretty. I can see your bone Thank structure. You. Uh, come right here. I can see your bone structure in your face. I couldn't see that when your hair was down and long before. So this is Eric Bland. He's a celebrity hairstylist. Eric's done me some a couple of times too. Tell us what you did to her hair because I like that you also pulled it back. But the texture is different too. How did you get her texture to go um, more curly? Well, actually, that's her natural texture. What I did was she had a lot of split ends, a lot of dryness from. The, uh, keeping the weave and putting gel. So what I did was I cut it and then it just brought her natural texture back. She still has a few straight ends only because she's not willing to go quite as short right now, but um, it'll eventually start to curl up because I got most of the dead ends off. So that's I like seeing texture. your face. I like seeing your forehead and like your cheekbones. I think that's really pretty. It's going to take getting some use, getting used oh, to yeah, it. Oh yeah, but you yeah. make it work and you look good doing yeah. it. <laughs> Me and you, girl, we're both working face. No, we're not hiding behind. Uh -huh. Put your face down here. Let's get a little close up. Mm -hmm. Work, work. Smile with your eyes. Smile with your eyes. Smile with your eyes. You know, the message here today, I think, is about choices. I think it's about, you know, having options. But I think it is really important to understand that when we make certain choices, those choices do go back into history, and there's a reason why we make those choices. Um, 
but I think everybody, you know, is free to make that choice, if that makes sense, right? When I wear that, I understand that there's some reasons why I do, or reasons why society thinks that that is beautiful, and I understand why I wear this, because I feel beautiful this way. All right, see you later.